absolutely people are impatient. You can see today it's an absolutely freezing, freezing day. We've still got a good turnout. We're still getting a lot of public support. That hasn't wavered at all. We're all just sick of waiting. We just seem to be, you know, waiting around and I don't know whether they're digging the heels in the same negotiations are going on behind the table, but we, we haven't seen any, any evidence of that. We just want this sorted. It's, it's gone on too long now. It's absolutely ridiculous. And it just goes to show if we hadn't a fault, this would have been done and dusted over 16 months ago. So we're just going to keep on fighting until it gets sorted. We're not going anywhere until it is. Nothing's changed within the fight as far as I'm concerned. They've only suspended our letters of dismissal. I want them withdrawn. Yes, they can be put back. I want to see for these ladies and gentlemen, I want to see them gone, withdrawn. It's not fair. It's not right. Yeah, I, I have a lot of sympathy for that. It would be a lot better if it was withdrawn rather than suspended but to me the most important thing is getting a solution that sees teaching assistants not losing money so that's what I'm trying to work on at the moment and no intention of this dragon until September. I know the TA who's in, heavily involved has been made to sign a confidentiality agreement so she can't pass on what they're discussing um, which is quite frustrating as you can imagine for us. We had to fight for Megan to be in there as well they didn't want any any of us, you know, speaking for us, they didn't want anybody in there, so we had to fight to get her in. We've kind of got to a critical point, if you like, where we're, we're um, drafting new job descriptions for the teaching assistants, so it's trying to get a balance between moving things on quickly and getting it right. This is a one-off opportunity to actually get it right and sort out the monumental mess that are contracts for teaching assistants across the county. So we're that's what we're trying to do at the moment. We really don't want to rush it because if we don't get this stage right, we won't get the right outcome. I'm part of a work team that's been set up by the invitation of Durham County Council to look at the grading system, the gradings of the teaching assistants in the county to see if we can boost our grades by taking into um, account the extra responsibility that we've all been landed with in the last few years since the last job evaluation. The children who we have to deal with have more complex needs, both physical and emotional, and we're dealing with that, we're dealing with outside agencies, and the whole scope of every aspect of the teaching assistant's role in school has increased enormously, and I'm afraid our grades just don't reflect that responsibility. Yes, they're in negotiations about job descriptions, but what, what's to say they won't still dismiss us in September or still cut our pay. I can't afford to lose the amount of money here on a single parent with a disabled child and the worst is the waiting. It's been going on forever. Um, it is stressful for everybody. I take antidepressants because of the situation. There's the worry of trying to think, oh well, I need to save money here when you don't earn really enough to put any away in the first place. We're coming up to like, like nearly 18 months now that this has been hanging over us and it's, it's really not fair, it's having a massive effect on everybody. Everybody's starting to get impatient, but that impatient, we have to use that emotion and channel it into the right directions. In other words, make sure that our, our campaign is still in the public awareness. There's lots of voluntary redundancies coming up now and a lot of people are going through a lot still. So we had all of this fight before Christmas and now there's another fight in addition to this fight I feel as well. So morale's still there because we're so stubborn and we're so determined and we won't give up but it is, it's hard, it's really, really hard to have this permanently hanging. It's, for me it's been every day for 16 months now it's hanging and that's difficult. There was a full council meeting earlier on in the week um, Owen Temple came out and said hello and came and spoke to me but it was interesting watching the others all go in because some gave a little toot and others it was just heads down and drive out and not acknowledging we stood there with the sign at all. I've just said to people come and walk a day in our shoes, come and do our job and then come out to something like this come and walk a day in our shoes, live my life with the thought that I'm going to lose my house if nothing changes, if this is the smoke screen till after the election, then, then you can make decisions on my life when you've walked it. We know there's negotiations going on, but they're, they're saying it's confidential, but for us, that, that's no help, because we're still you know, out here thinking what's happening, so we need to keep in the public eye you know, and let them know that, yes, we understand there's negotiations, but we're not just going to sit back 
and do nothing. The Durham teaching assistants are still fighting against the attempts to cut the pier. They're out again today in the centre of Durham. They want your support. Come here, there'll be councillors asking for your vote in the elections. You want to be clear, councillors who vote for cuts in workers' pay don't deserve the support of anybody. In negotiations, you always have to be careful. You have to be aware of, of your opponents, if you like, and they will use whatever they can to seek to persuade you to go along with our thoughts. So you've got, first of all, to be aware, but you've also, deep down, be conscious of what your strength is. And the strength of, of the TAs is fantastic, and they've built it up without any union influence or whatever. And that's their strength. And then they ought to be well aware of that strength and not hand it over during negotiations. Another thing that worries me is secrecy that goes on within the meeting. If you're in a, a dispute of this kind, accountability is absolutely crucial. And you never ever concede that to anybody, whoever they are. If they're just going to keep digging in the heels, we need to show them that we're mean business and we will have to go back on strike. It's not something that would take lightly, you know, it's not a decision we take lightly. We don't want to have to have the children off school, but we we'll have to keep on fighting. We're fighting for us and we're fighting for them, for their education. If it's the only way we can get them to listen, then that's what we'll do. And I know the staff who I work with are more than prepared to come out and do that. I've spoke to one or two today and they said, look, if the negotiations are not completed within three weeks, we're on strike again. And I would go along with that. I think that gives them a target. If the negotiators don't meet that target, then you meet yours of taking that kind of positive action. They think if they keep us lo going long enough, we will back down and it will die down. No, we need to be seen like now. We need to strike and we just need to let people know it is not sorted and it needs to be sorted no matter how the council or how the unions drag it out. On March the 25th we've called a National Day of Solidarity and basically it's a call out to all trade unionists, all workers in struggle and striking workers at the minute to come up and be part of this National Day of Solidarity so that we can coordinate our efforts. Two things really, it's sort of to say thank you to people who've stood with us and stood for us in all of these months but also to move it forward and to say we're still here, we're not going away. We are not just fighting for the TAs in Durham, we are fighting on behalf of everybody, the small grassroots movements, thanks to our committee we've done this and we support you 100%. We would be so grateful if you could come and support us in our Solidarity March. It's about being together, isn't it, and supporting us and supporting everybody that has something to fight for yeah. and I think if it's if it's anything like the other events we've had, we'll have an amazing time. We know already of quite a few groups and, and trade union branches that have already come to stand with us. And yes, we would say to anybody, please come and stand with us. It, it means a lot. It's not just about our campaign. It's also once, once hopefully we've sorted our situation out, the thing that worries us the most is the massive cuts in education budgets because what we don't want to have happen is for us to save our pay to find that at the end of it there's no jobs left. There's TAs out on strike down in Derby, we'd love for them to come up and join us. We know that the BA cabin crew at the minute are going through a terrible situation with their terms and conditions, you know, we'd love them to come up as well. The rail workers, Southern Rail, have also been in dispute, London Underground workers and Crossrail workers as well you know so I would say to all workers who see this all workers in struggle we send you our solidarity and please come up and show your solidarity and together we can make a difference we will win this we aren't in this to lose we aren't in this to come second this reflects the, the passion that we put into our role in schools every day if we didn't have this passion we couldn't do our jobs in school we will win